Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about AC Machinery Fundamentals, Chapter 4 from Mr. Chapman's book. And here primarily I'll be solving end chapter problem 4.1. Okay, the question is a simple loop rotating in a uniform magnetic field shown in figure 4.1 has the following characteristics. So this is a wire loop. This wire loop is rotated inside a magnetic field. And these are some of the parameters which we'll discuss in next slide. And we have to calculate these five parameters. So what is given is the these. B is the uh, magnetic field. 0 0.5 Tesla to the right. So this is the magnetic field. R is the radius 0 0.1 meter, this is the radius. L is length 0 0.5 meter, this is the length of the wire. And omega is the rotational frequency or rotational speed, 103 radians per second, it is rotating at this speed. Now the first question is, calculate the voltage induced in the rotating loop. So, uh, I'll not go into the derivation of the formulas. Uh, this is given in the book and if you have difficulty, let me know. So, I can make another video. So, I'll straight away copy the formula from the book. So, the induced voltage is given by this formula and all the parameters are given here. So, we'll just plug in the values. So, R, omega, beta and length and omega. So this is the induced voltage. The next question is, suppose a 5 ohm resistor is connected as a load across the terminal to the loop. Calculate the current flowing through the resistor. So very simple, the voltage is induced here, but uh, current cannot flow unless we connect a resistor or provide a path. So we have connected a 5 ohm resistor and now we can easily calculate the current by I is equal to V over R or here I is equal to E induced over R. This is E induced, we calculate it from here, R 5 ohm. So this is the in, uh, current flowing in the circuit. Now part 3, we have to calculate the magnitude and direction of the induced torque. Here also I will use the formula from the book. So this is the formula for the induced torque. Plugging in the values. There is one point. The formula given in the book is in terms of theta. But uh, here is an explanation that if the loop is rotating at a constant angular velocity omega, then the angle theta of the loop will increase linearly with time. That means theta is dependent with time or theta can be written to be equal to omega t. So we'll replace this theta with omega t because everything else is in terms of omega t. So omega t and now we plug in the values. So this is our t induced. Now the question is about the direction of the induced torque. So what he's saying is that the direction of the torque is clockwise if it would tend, like, tend to cause a clockwise rotation. And it will be counterclockwise if it would tend to cause a counterclockwise rotation. So in our diagram it is causing a counterclockwise rotation and therefore the torque direction we can write it to be counterclockwise. So the direction of the torque is counterclockwise. Then calculate the electric power being generated by the loop. Now, when we talk of electric power, we actually mean average power. We have the parameter for instantaneous power. So instantaneous power is E uh, induced and I induced or I flowing and these are in, in terms of a T, so instantaneous values. So this is the instantaneous power. Now for average power, you know from the circuit that average power is 1 over t integral of the instantaneous power. 
So we'll use this formula. Plugging in the instantaneous power. Now integration of sine square is difficult, so we'll break it down with the help of the trigonometric formula. And I hope you remember this formula. So we'll use this formula. So for sine, we are writing this terms. And then simplifying. Now, this we can integrate and we'll get t and we have put in the limit. It is difficult to integrate this one and we'll solve this part actually logically. So the logic is that integration of any sinusoidal signal over a period is zero. So the positive plus negative is equal to zero. So we can write this to be equal to zero. And putting value of t here and this t and t will get cancelled. So we'll get 2.65 watt is the electric power generated. Okay, and the final question is calculate the mechanical power being consumed by the loop and how does this number compare to the amount of electric power? Now the mechanical power has a formula as shown here. We have both uh, T induced and omega, we know. So omega from here and T induced we calculated. So plugging in this is our P mechanical. Now to compare we have to put it in the same form that we had the electrical power. And to do that we will again use the formula for sine squared. This was the formula. So plugging in we get this term here. Now again we can conclude that average power of the sinusoidal signal will be zero over a long time. So we can write it to be equal to zero and therefore mechanical power will be equal to 2.65 watt which is equal to the electrical power. So the conclusion we can draw that the amount of mechanical power consumed by the loop is equal to the amount of electrical power created by the loop. Therefore, this machine is acting as a generator converting mechanical power into electrical power. So for this, I have taken help from the solution manual and thanks to them. I hope you have been able to follow it. Thank you.